When you're doing a landscape painting, you might want to add some trees. Instead of painting every detail, let's look at some ways that are more spontaneous and natural. Using the spattering technique and limiting it to areas can create some very effective trees. Using a number 8 round blend brush, I'm going to take some color and start to spatter. I'm going to try to limit the spatter to one area. This will help give the impression of leaves. If I wanted a more deliberate shape, I could use the paper stencil technique. Then once I have my color down, I'll start adding the trunk and branches. If I was applying this to a painting, I would first do the background, then apply the trees. Let's say you wanted to do a painting of early spring, and you wanted trees with blossoms. You can use the same technique, but just a little differently. Before I start a painting, I'll need to decide where I want the trees to be. Then using the masking fluid, I'll use my old toothbrush or a brush designated specifically for masking and spatter the masking to preserve the white of the paper. This is where the flowers will be. To make the painting more interesting, use different size spatter. It'll help give the impression of depth. Then once you're satisfied with the amount of masking you've applied, let it dry. Once dry, you can apply the background and the rest of the painting. For smoother color transitions, wet the background first, then apply color. To give the impression of sky through the branches, place color on top of the tree. The masking will help preserve the details. Notice how I want to cover a wide area quickly. This is when I'll use my large number 30 natural hair brush. Using the wet into wet technique will allow the two colors to blend into each other. This will prevent any hard lines and build a foundation for my painting. If I wanted to be more detail oriented, I can always do that later. At this stage, I need to allow this to completely dry. Once dry, I'll use different values of quinacridone magenta and start spattering color. For a finer spray and to give the impression of more detail, I'll use my toothbrush. At this stage, while I still have the masking, I can start adding some of the branches. Again, I don't want to overdo it, I just want to give the suggestion. Then I'll add the trunk. To give it more of a natural and organic effect, I'm going to hold my brush higher up the handle, so it's looser in my hand. I'll bring the brush stroke down into the grass. If I leave it this way, it's going to look like it's stuck on paper. So I'll take clean water and soften the bottom edge. While I have this area wet, I'm going to start adding some detail to the grass. I'm going to use a combination of hard and soft edges. I don't need to paint every blade of grass. I only need to give the impression. By adding just a little detail and allowing the bottom edge to blend out into the clean water, it makes for a nice combination. Here a little spattering helps too. It breaks up the sameness and makes it more interesting. Then remember, you don't have to do everything at one time. Do as much as you can, then leave it alone. Then start working on another area. Now to add more volume to the trees, I'm going to use a number 8 round blend brush and spatter more color. The droplets are going to be larger than the toothbrush, which will help to add more color. Then when I'm done, and before I remove the masking, I'll need to let this dry. Then using a rubber eraser or the tips of your fingers, start rubbing off the masking. Now you can see the white of the paper that's revealed underneath. And all that color that was on top of the tree really doesn't look like much now, but it does look more lacy and delicate. Now to bring back more blossoms and details, spatter color again on top of the trees. Now to help your trees stand out more, start working on the grass. And begin to add more contrast. 
You can even wash color over the previous layer. As you apply color to the foreground, use random brush strokes. Then with a large number 30 natural hair brush, soften some of the edges. Leave some hard lines to keep it interesting. Notice how the foreground and background work together and there is no separation line. You actually have more feeling of distance. If I want to, I can always add more details, such as a fence line. 